Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to put a PVA separator, a spray method of a PVA separator onto the standard platinum cathode on stainless steel that we use in our um, two centimeter cubic microbial fuel cells. Okay, so here we're going to prepare our solution. Um, we're making an 8% PVA solution as outlined in Dr. Guang Chen's paper from 2012 on PVA and MFCs. Um, I've measured out my, my ingredients already and we're going to have our water. Then we're going to add our PVA to it. At an 8% weight to weight. And then we also have uh, tetrabutyl ammonium chloride that acts as a porogen to increase the porosity um, of the PVA. And that is at 5.6% uh, weight to weight. Like I said, that is outlined in Dr. Guang Chen's paper from 2012. It's located in the supplemental information. We're going to heat that in our condensing unit. Um, if you are actually doing this in Dr. Logan's lab and using this condensing unit, you're going to set this dial to just below the number three. Um, if you're not here, you want to keep the solution between about 80 and 100 degrees Celsius, and you want it in a condensing unit so you don't lose your water through evaporation. I'm just going to set the stir bar here to keep everything moving. And then this will take approximately half an hour for the solution to dissolve the PVA and for it to be ready for use. I keep all my solutions on the hot plate um, to keep them warm. The PVA solution will actually start to solidify and get thicker if you allow it to cool down, which is not good for applying it through an air gun. It, it'll get too thick and the air gun will not be able to function properly. Um, the water I have there to clean out the air gun in between layers, because it will take several layers on the cathode in order to completely cover it. If you're going to have your cathode and your anode directly next to each other and you need the PVA to provide a barrier between the two, then you'll probably need to do six or seven layers of the spray-on application, where if you have a little bit of distance between your anode and cathode and you're just looking for an oxygen barrier, you can probably get away with three or four layers as you don't have to have that physical barrier preventing the two from touching. First, we're gonna take our, microbial, our, our cathode and we're going to affix it to something that we can spray on. I've chosen this big piece of cardboard so that we can keep the splatter from going all over the fume hood. And we're going to affix it there. Um, once you've affixed it, you're gonna to wanna to put something across the top of the cathode so that you can preserve a place for your um, connection point in your microbial fuel cell. Okay, so here I have my air gun um, attached to the air hose in the fuse in the fume hood, and the, I can't not give you the specifics of this air gun as this was a used one that I found in the lab. But I have found that if you get an air gun with a larger um, nozzle, it works better. Um, the smaller nozzle tends to induce more air bubbles into your solution and it's not as a homogeneous um, separator that you get on your cathode. So here I am going to spray on the first layer onto this the platinum catalyst side of the cathode and you'll notice that it comes out somewhat white and that is because of those air bubbles that I had previously mentioned. Like I said, the larger nozzle tip will um, allow for fewer air bubbling in the solution. 
once I've applied my layer, I'm going to have to give that time to dry. I tend to flip over whatever I'm spraying on just so that um, all the PVA doesn't, um, gravity doesn't force it all to one side of the cathode. And while that's drying, I take that water that I had and I clean out the airbrush because it'll typically take 15 to 20 minutes for each layer of PVA to dry and you don't want PVA building up in your airbrush um, and clogging the thing. So I typically um, run a whole jar worth of water through to make sure that the nozzle is clear and we're not building up too much PVA in there to prevent the gun from working. So after you've run all the water through there, if you want to expedite the process, you can use the air gun to increase the airflow across the cathode to make it dry faster, or you can just walk away, come back in about 20 minutes, and that layer will be complete, and you can start the process all over. Okay, so here on the right-hand side, we have a completed cathode that has a PVA separator with um, four coatings on it and on the left is just an example of the cathode prior to any PVA being added. 